Ah, Summoner. I heard that your strategy is what led to our recent victory. What magnificent tactical thinking. The ingenuity of your scheme was something to behold. While I am here in Asker, you command me. I am not a king. I wield my lance as but one of many heroes. Fighting shoulder to shoulder with heroes from other worlds, I have experienced much. Yet, at some point, I must return to the Holy Kingdom of Fargus and carry out my duties as king. And I intend to make good use of everything I have learned during my time in Asgard. The wounds of the long war in Foden have not yet healed. The people will not easily forget that suffering. I must carefully consider what Fodlum needs, and what I can do to bring that to be. To that end, while I am still in Asgard, I will seek counsel from those of other realms. You find yourself at a crossroads. You must bring the people together, but you are still in tumult. The fighting was bitter, but it is over now, King of Fargus. I have heard that you and the people of Tellius suffered much, and for a long time. And yet, the issues that divided your peoples were overcome, and peace was made at last. Indeed. The road to peace was a long and bloody one. In war, there are always victors and vanquished. However, as the fighting draws to a close, even the defeated may find themselves looking towards a bright future. King of Fargus, tell me of your resolve. What drove you to war? The regret of allies fallen in combat. Those who lost their lives before realizing their goals. That was what drove me to fight. I carried that anguish within me and strove to achieve what they could not. So that is how you found meaning in fighting. I see. There is no doubt that this roused your personal sense of justice. However, consider this. Is dispelling regret any different from taking vengeance? New hatred is born from old. Vengeance begets vengeance. Unless that chain is broken, true peace will remain forever out of reach. I see. It is true that I may have forged a chain of hatred with my own hands. The sensation of running an enemy through, or the sight of the light fading from a foe's eyes. They will never leave me. I can only hope that this did indeed dispel the regret of those who departed. But, as for the chain of hatred I myself forged, I do not know if I can break it. What I do know is that I must take responsibility for it, to repay those who lost their lives. It seems your resolve has returned, King of Fargus. As for me, I will pray for the fallen. I must protect my people. Fargus is not an abundant land. Yet the people work as hard as they can, dreaming of better days. They may not be able to fight, but that is no reason those dreams should be stolen from them. I see. You are the sword of the people. A blade for those who cannot wield one. That is why you fight. The strong protect the weak. But we must not become a land where those with power run roughshod over the people. We must support each other. Walk forward, arm in arm, weak and strong. We must build a future, together, with no concern for station or birth. This is the path that we in the Holy Kingdom of Fargus must tread. You wish a kingdom built by the people working together, those with power and those without. I once thought this very idea a fool's dream. True resolve to make this dream real.
I know a hero who united everyone, bridging the divisions born of status, birthplace, and race. You're speaking of that mercenary commander, aren't you? He had the resolve to overcome the pain of the past and move forward, for everyone's sake. It is the same resolve you show now. I did not arrive at this juncture alone. And to move forward into a new day, I will need to rely on everyone yet again. Your words ring true. You have the resolve to become a true leader. As long as you hold fast to your ideals, the way forward will remain clear. I will take your words to heart. I vow to do everything I can to forge a future for Fargus and all Fulgrim. The Holy Kingdom of Fargus is not wealthy. However, raising taxes would only burden the people. Oh, what can be done? Hey, Dimitri, are you trying to enter the women's baths? This one's on the house! <laughs> is this my punishment? Professor, all of you, I am sorry. Oh, dust yourself off. It's barely a scratch. Nothing to lose your head over. Sorry. Before I realized what I was doing, I hit you with a special. But I pulled my punch a little bit. I think. It's just... You gave me such a nasty surprise. Why were you shuffling towards the women's baths like a zombie? I must apologize, Commander Anna. I was deeply preoccupied. But though Fargus has united Fodlin, a dark cloud remains. To maintain the peace, we will need soldiers. And weapons. Yes, we will surely need many weapons. If this problem has you so concerned, it must be serious indeed. But, come to think of it, there's a merchant in Fodlin that looks a lot like me. Isn't there? Ah, oh, yes. She has come to my aid many times. Okay. That gives me an idea. I'll write her a letter, merchant to merchant. If I do that, I think she'll get you what you need. I see. I'd be very grateful. What we need most is... Could you request durable weapons? Durable weapons. I see. You're hoping for weapons that won't fail in the heat of battle. As you know, Commander Anna, my crest gives me strength far beyond the average. Experience has taught me that I'll smash a normal sword with just a few practice swings. That's not great, but it's a golden opportunity for a weapons merchant. Surely you must see that having sturdy weapons is of the utmost importance. But Dimitri, is this really a problem? Wouldn't most of your army do fine with normal weaponry? It's not like everyone in the Holy Kingdom of Fargus has your beastly strength, right? I suppose that is true, yes. Alright then, I'll request an extra durable weapon for you, and normal weapons for everyone else. In exchange, from now on, don't get so lost in thought that you wander into places that you shouldn't be. Do we have a deal? <laughs> of course. You have my apologies, Commander Anna. I am grateful for your concern. I require a large number of weapons. Neither my forces nor my allies should find themselves unarmed. If possible, as well as weapons, I would like defensive gear. I would see all the soldiers protected. Okay! A large number of weapons, plus defensive gear. I'm glad to hear that you're thinking about your allies. That's the mark of a good commander. You're a fine king. The only reason I am king is their support. No, more than that. I was able to claw my way back to humanity thanks to my dear friends. Going forward, I will continue to rely on them. Fodlin must remain peaceful. A 
And that's why you need to supply them with good equipment. If this comes from deep within your heart, I can't say no to that. I will make sure Anna of Fodlin understands just how important this request is. I thank you. I will do what I can to aid you while I remain in Asker. Lasting stability may not come to Fodlin for some time. Yet I will move forward, believing in a day when the darkness clears at last. Sounds like the situation is still volatile. Once the fighting in Asker is over, I might want to head to Fodlin. What? No, you should return to Elise. But you know me, I just love to help. What's more helpful than a merchant? That's my job, helping. <laughs> Who do you think you're kidding? <clears throat> In any case, our first priority is to secure peace for Asker. For now, let us focus on the problems in front of us. You can say that again. It's been one thing after another. Of course, I'll sell, sell, sell. I mean, help, help, help! The Askren people, for peace! What? Not you too, King Dimitri. Oh, that scowl. 